Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, my name is Anthony Howell. Online, I go by the Posh Wolf. So Howell, Wolf, that's the connection, Posh, PowerShell. But I had a really good, cool thought last night. <laughs> I was like, what, what does the Posh Wolf look like? So I kind of went a little overboard with some um, <clears throat> AI generated images. We'll have some fun with that. Uh, but these are our sponsors uh, this week. You know, you, you've heard this every session, I hope. Thank them. They, they, they are what makes this possible. Um, and all of my sessions, including this one, uh, is in this repository. You don't need to worry about uh, uh, taking pictures of the code. It's just the possible posh wolf slash sessions. Uh, this deck will be on there. It's not there currently. Um, I um, decided to edit it in OneDrive instead of Git, which is a good idea with non-text files. Uh, so just brief introduction. So I, well, I'm gonna stop cramming my neck. I'm Anthony Hell. Um, I'm from Eugene, Oregon. So it's probably raining, but it isn't. It's just cloudy today. Um, I got four kids, two dogs, and a wife. So that means that this week my wife's going crazy. Um, so I'm gonna thank her when I get home. Um, and I, I've had a, I've had a strange career. I had some have someone called a choose your own adventure career. You guys remember those books? Yeah, yeah. I've done you know help desk, call center, uh, field work, desktop support, sysadmin, DevOps, PowerShell. Uh, SRE, was even a sales engineer for a startup that failed, um, cloud architect, and now um, I'm a director of DevOps uh, at Evelyn. They're paying for me to be here, so there's their logo. Thank you to Evelyn for paying for me to be here. They'll probably watch this uh, recording even. So yeah, I was really excited about that. Um, so Posh Wolf, right? I need someone to do me a quick favor, take a picture of me up here and send it to me, Slack, email, Twitter, whatever. Um, it just, it just shows my wife that people actually think the PowerShell is cool, right? You know, because you try to explain it to your significant other who isn't in tech, and they're like, well, PowerShell, I've never heard of it. It must not be that cool, right? So, yeah, thank you all. I saw some people taking pictures. I'm on Slack, Anthony Howell, or Twitter. I'm not on Twitter very often, but, oh, I, I, you will notice I don't list a blog on here. I do have a blog, theposhwolf.com. The last time I posted on it was a couple years ago. I'll revive it at some point, but four kids is a lot. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, so uh, what we're going to cover today, <laughs> yeah, yeah, these are great. I love them. <laughs> um, quick refresher, what are hash tables? What are PS custom objects? We're going to give some in-depth look on four different areas. Um, and then I'm hoping we'll have time, but I got a really good case study of uh, using hash tables instead of PS custom objects. I find that you know, in, in my career and talking to a lot of people that use PS, PS custom or PS objects for everything, I got a really good use case for um, a real world, world use case for using hash tables. And we'll talk about why as we go through this demo. Um, so this can all be done in PowerShell 5.1 and newer. I will be doing it PowerShell 7.4.1, so the latest version. I'll mention when there, are, when there are known differences. And when I say known, I mean known to me. If you guys know some, shout them out. Uh, in VS Code and on Windows 10, so my laptop does not support Windows 11. Uh, so, Quick overview. So PS custom object itself, if we look at the help, so this is kind of kind of squished, sorry about that. Um, but you just help about PS custom object. This is a brief summary of that. PS custom object itself was a type accelerator uh, introduced in PowerShell v3. We'll make fun of how PowerShell v2 used to do this. Um, and a type accelerator is just, uh, you notice on the, on the right hand side, we got PS custom object inside of the square brackets and it's casting a hash table. If you don't know what that means, we'll go through some examples. Um, yeah, and a type accelerator itself, the short version, it's, it's an alias for a .NET type. And you can look at the help about type accelerators. And if you're not familiar with the syntax on the right, we'll look at it. Hash tables, um, they are what, what uh, in programming languages are called dictionaries or associative arrays. Um, if that doesn't mean anything to you, it didn't mean anything to me the first time I read it, I had to use them. Uh, the idea of a dictionary is you look up a word, you get the definition, right? You look up the key in a hash table, you get the value. That's where a dictionary comes from. I don't know where associative array comes from. So it's just another word that the docs use. Uh, but it's, it's just a collection of key value pairs. So on the right hand side, you see event equals DevOps Summit 2024, et cetera. Um, but the, the interesting thing about hash tables is the keys and values can be any.NET type. So they don't have to be strings, they can be anything. And we'll, we'll look at a really crazy, pointless example that demonstrates this. Uh, but the, the thing to note, and is a kind of part of the summary of this presentation, is hash tables are, and this is quoting the documentation, very efficient for finding and retrieving data, okay? That, that is the, um, one of the points of hash tables. 
Uh, so demo time. Uh, if, if, if I had too much fun, you guys just say so, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so a AI assumes that all the other uh, individuals, if you will, in the image are also animals of some kind, so, except for the guy in the back, I guess. I mean, I don't, I don't know what happened with that. All right, so we got a lot of ground. I'm gonna go fast. If you guys got questions, just shout them out, raise your hand. Um, here we go, and all this code, it's in GitHub. So if, if it's if something you guys wanna look at, great. So creating hash tables. We are starting with hash tables because PS Custom Objects kind of build on hash tables. So there's a lot of ways to do it. You can use new object, uh, so we can do that here. Oh, here, actually, let me, I meant to do this before starting, just clean up the prompt. All right, cool. Uh, so new object, type name, hash table. Right, we can create a hash table with curly braces. Some people call them, uh, is it mustache braces? Is that, is that the one people like to use? Um, I prefer curly braces, so I'm gonna use that. And it creates a new hash table, it's empty. A lot of ways to add to it. Um, hash tables have the add method, so inside of the add method, uh, you have uh, key value. So in this case, we're using strings. So event uh, is PowerShell summit, date, and then uh, the location. So pr pretty straightforward. And you can see the output there. This should kind of allude to what it's gonna be in the future. Hash tables don't really output all that well. And we'll look at some examples of that and how to solve that. Easiest way to create a hash table is uh, with the uh, at symbol, curly braces, and then your list of key values, right? Not meant that looks like what you do with PS Custom Objects, it's because it's very similar. Um, and you can do this inline. I've, I've worked with people that love their one-liners. Um, even using semicolons, you can do that with hash tables. Cool. It works, it's nothing different. Um, one of the gotchas with uh, hash tables is you can't sort the keys. Um, and I don't know why you would wanna do that, but I just wanted to call that out. It's just one of the, the weird things with it. Um, unless you use the get enumerator, and we'll get into what get enumerator does uh, when we talk about iterating in hash tables. Um, and you will notice, and I meant to point this out earlier, I did not. Um, date, location, event was not the order I inserted the keys into the hash table, right? I did event, date, location. Hash tables are unordered. So if you, you don't care about that, doesn't matter. Uh, but you can use the ordered um, uh, type accelerator to make it a ordered hash table, which if we run this, you can see the keys or the order is maintained, uh, but the type is different. And so it's actually a ordered dictionary instead of a hash table. So before, and I actually didn't have this as a, an example, we actually get the type is actually a hash table, specifically, okay? Uh, and we can get really fancy with hash tables. So you can, you can replace JSON with hash tables if you wanted to. I'm not recommending that, just throwing that out there, okay? So we can, we can create a nested hash table. Uh, and I have actually seen somebody who was you know, really into PowerShell, did all of their configurations in .ps1 files, it was just one big hash table. And that's really what a, a manifest is, right? Yeah, so maybe it's not so bad, I guess. <laughs> uh, and you can, I mean, you can, there's no limit with hash tables. You can make them as large as you want. I just have a couple of contrived examples here uh, that show uh, several uh, dates here. So you can see the keys here is the, uh, the date itself. Um, and this is gonna be really important in one of my upcoming examples, so we'll keep moving here. Uh, and you will see that uh, in the output there, it, it only shows so much of the nested uh, values. Um, and for anything, you know, too far deep, it does a two string method. So that's where when you do a, an object that doesn't have a two string method, it returns the proper, the uh, type name. So that's where you get systems.collections.hashables down below. Uh, and you can include arrays. So nothing really special here, except that we have an array of events inside of this hash table. Uh, so if we look at that, we get the array hash table and that output looks especially bad, right? We don't know what, what's going on there. And there's a point, there's a reason I'm mentioning that that we'll get to. Uh, but we can look at the, the property of, uh, of the hash table uh, using dot notation here. And we'll, we'll look at a couple of the ways that we can, we can access that. And you know, arrays of hash tables. And this, this example here is really to drive home. I mean, this, the, we, we can scroll through this, like where does each object start and end? Or each, sorry, hash table start and end. And when you get to hash tables with lots of keys, it's, I mean, that's, that's not useful output. Right, but we do see some. We do see some nice, like the the output here, the year. We actually see what the year is. Uh, older versions of PowerShell didn't have that nice uh, display of some of the nested properties. 
Um, and we can actually sort using an expression. So sort object, you can pass an a hash table with an expression in it. Um, so this is actually going to sort by the date year. So each has a key of a date with has a key of a year. Uh, we can sort by that value specifically. Uh, and so you can see we got now the reverse. So the newest or the oldest is on the bottom. The most in the future is on the top. Uh, and we can pull from JSON. Um, this is one of my favorite. I know this is really small. One of my favorite things about PowerShell 7, I think it was actually in PowerShell 6, is the as hash table with convert from JSON. Um, and I'll have an example about why this is really cool, besides the fact that you get a hash table. Um, basically, it comes down to hash tables are really cool, and that's what I'm trying to convince you guys of here. Um, so this is mock data that we're going to use in a case study. This is not a real person, not a real email address. Don't worry. Um, and I mentioned we can do any type as a key. So here, this is a valid hash table, right? We've got you know, booleans, we've got integers, we've got strings, we've got a date time, we've got a, whoop, sorry. Uh, I was always wondering why people's mouses were you know, migrating down. It's because this thing is tilted. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and this is a valid hash table. And this is going to look especially weird. Oh, we did get an error. Oh, I'm not running as admin. That's not a problem. Cool. Uh, so you can see that you know, we've got you know, processes and services and I wasn't, you know, I didn't have the foresight to come up with a legitimate example, so there's just, you guys can use anything you want for keys and dice. It's, it's really flexible on like PS custom objects. So the same kind of deal with PS custom objects. Um, if you haven't been using PowerShell since V2, you will not recognize this, because that's a good thing. Um, but previously, to create a PS object, you new object, you know, type name PS object, and then for every member you wanted to add, you have to run add member explicitly. I looked at some of my old scripts and it's just, it, it's painful. Uh, but it works, and it still works in PowerShell 7. So we can create an object with three different properties, and each property takes its own command to do so. Um, and you can still uh, use new object today um, using the property and passing a hash table to create a PS object. Um, and again, that creates just the same type of object. Um, very simple. Um, uh, thanks to PowerShell v3, we now have the, you know, the PS custom object type accelerator. Um, so that this is literally taking a hash table and it makes it into a PS custom object. That was one of my favorite features in uh, PSV3. And of course, inline, it's just a hash table. Um, if you are a semicolon junkie, there you go. That works too. I got a couple of uh, examples here uh, just to kind of compare with hash tables. So we're creating a, an array of PS custom objects. And you notice here the output, it's much easier to understand where one uh, PS custom object stops and the next one starts because uh, it's formatted as a table, which is nice. Uh, we can sort them. I mean, really what I'm getting at here is PS custom or PS objects in general were built for the pipeline. Hash tables, not so much, okay? So we can pipe it to sorted object. We get exactly what we'd expect. We can do the same thing for select object, where object, you know, all those good things. And we can do nested properties. So we can do, like the hash table, we can get really funky and build this weird you know, object, uh, and it, 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 that's legit. I mean, there's, there's nothing, nothing crazy there. We get this nice output. We didn't, get, we didn't used to see this nice nested output. Um, so you see in the date and location properties, we can see some sub-properties, it's really nice. Uh, and then from JSON, uh, you know, it's the same thing. We don't use the as hash table. Uh, the interesting thing is, you know, considering hash tables, PS custom objects, um, if we were to do, you know, want to choose one, you know, we can look at the performance of it, uh, which is what um, Rob was doing this morning. Uh, so if we load them as hash tables, and you can see it's as hash tables there, um, takes about uh, 1,800 milliseconds. Uh, and if we do it as PS objects, it's going to take a little bit longer. So it's not significant, but it's a little bit. But we'll look at some really some specific performance. <clears throat> Performance examples. Cool. Any questions so far? Just kind of creating in the basic stuff. Okay. Uh, so updating. So let's look at updating uh, uh, hash tables. So hash tables have some, a really cool thing where we can use the square bracket notation or dot notation, and they both operate the same way. Uh oh, phone's on silent, please. No, I'm just kidding. Don't worry about it. Um, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The question was, 2024 is a real sin calling somebody at all. <laughs> so 
Sorry, I always forget to do that, so I'm taking advantage of this opportunity to remember to do that. Um, so using the square bracket notation with the key, and in this case it's a string, so it's enclosed in uh, single quotes, uh, we can access and update the property. So before it was, well, it should have been Bellevue, I don't, I don't remember. We updated it to Redmond, so you can see it in the output. Same thing with dot notation. I mean, there's nothing, nothing special there. But the differentiator between hash tables and PS custom objects is that we can also add properties that way. So that you notice in the output below, and I'm pointing at my screen like you guys look at my screen. In the output below, um, there, there's no military time, for example. So if we replace that, if we uh, reference that property, it gets added in. PS custom objects don't do that, and I'll prove that to you in case you don't believe me. Um, in dot notation, it's the same thing. I mean, that, that, that's the cool thing about hash tables is there's no, no additional work to add a property, but it can bite you if you are expecting to get an error like with the PS custom object. And we do have the add method as well. We mentioned this uh, in, the, in the previous script. Uh, it's, it's all the same thing. And removing, removing uh, uh, um, keys in the hash table, you just specify the key with remove. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and to list the keys, there is a keys uh, property and that has a list of all the keys that are in the hash table and that'll become really that'll come in handy when we talk about iterating in a hash table uh, and to find out if the hash table contains a specific key we can look at the contains key method which will return true false or the uh, dash contains operator since keys operates uh, very similarly to a an array so it'll tell you if it's in there or not um, and which is more efficient so which would you use um, and this is actually a weird one because the answer is ambiguous. Um, and so using contains key, we get 65 milliseconds here. And if we use dash contains, uh, we get 67. Um, and actually have an example later on where it's the opposite. What's up, James? Well, um, it's, it's going to, the second one's going to lose the bigger half the table gets. Yes, and that's, thank you. So James is saying the second one's going to lose as the hash table gets bigger. We have an example with a bigger hash table where the second one lose, loses uh, very badly. No, thank you for that. Yeah. So I understand the hash table is a lot faster because you just index in the keys, maybe bypass the data as it needed. Is there a limit on key size? Oh, the question is is there a limit on hash table key size, like individual key size or number of? The amount of data you can put in the key, put the key name. The, the key itself, is there? I, I don't know. Uh, hash table keys are all by identity, so you can give a string that's as long as any string that you construct in the net, and so then there's like one billion characters, so if you come up with a longer <laughs> key, that's right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, I, after the key was like an actual process, in that case, like, it's just an object. At that point, you were not going to even have that string key limit, you could have as much embedded within the sub object if you again, want, so Again, key. any unique, uh, any unique object, you can all right, so the summary of the, the answers from the audience, thank you very much, um, is that the limit is based on the data type that you reference. So if you pass a string, whatever .NET's limit for a string is. Yeah. yeah. One yes. One more bit of nitpicky here, and, and this is just like, you know, don't forget ordered and don't use contains key, use contains, because when you use hash tables, they have slightly different signatures than other dictionaries. Ordered and hash table are both dictionaries. So if you use something that's on collections I dictionary, that's the method you want. Contains key only exists on hash tables. This will bite you. Because, sorry, it exists on hash tables and yes, bound parameters, but not ordered. So the, the additional information here is order dictionaries do not have contains key, they have contains, right? Which hash tables also have. Which hash tables also have. So you might as well just write dot contains, because it's going to always work. All right, it's good to know. Though <clears throat> I will point out that this talk is on hash tables, not order dictionaries. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that, that is really good information. Um, so so the, uh, for the recording, Order dictionaries and hash tables both have dot contains, hash tables only, and uh, PS bound parameters, which I thought was a hash table, but it sounds like its own type, um, also, or only, only have, con or so they both have both contains and contains key. So the, the um, summary here is use contains instead of contains key, so you can work with both. 
Thank you. All right. The last thing I want to show is we can access the properties from a variable. Uh, this should be pretty obvious with hash tables um, since we're using strings, so you can, you can pass a string to a variable, and that's still a string, and use that to reference the properties. Uh, but you know, just to show that location here is a string, we're going to go hash table dot, and then the variable. It might look kind of weird to you guys, but it works. And then same thing with uh, using uh, square, notation, square bracket notation. And this works for PS Custom Objects too, which we'll look at next. All uh, right, all right. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Grab the wrong one. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so PS Objects, you can update the property by referencing it with dot notation, right? We know that we've all used them. Okay, location is now different, um, but we can't add. So this is, this is the thing I mentioned with hash tables. You can't add a property by referencing it like hash tables. So it's, that is very different um, how it works. We can use add member. I mean, we, we've already looked at that. Uh, but add member also has a note properties member. This is something I learned at the PowerShell Summit uh, one of the last couple times I was here. Note property and properties member, note property members can take a hash table. You can add a, a bunch of properties at once if you want to use um, add member. That's cool. I didn't know that. And that works. So if you didn't know that, now you do too. Um, but the cool thing about PS objects is they have the PS object property. It's a hidden property. You can't tab complete it. Um, and so what that gives us is that gives us some additional metadata about that object. So it gives us the, the members, the properties, the methods, uh, and then some additional .NET stuff, including the type names. And so we can use that uh, to add properties as well. And this is something you don't, you're probably never going to use, and it's not a bad thing. Um, what's that? Very fast. Oh, and see, maybe I, so the, the response from James is it's very fast. I haven't, I haven't benchmarked that. Maybe I should have done that. Uh, but that's also how you can remove a property as well uh, with psobject.properties.remove. In this case, you only need the name of the property, which address is what we're removing, and it's been removed. Cool. Uh, but that's how you can list out if you need, if you need a, an array of all the property names, you can use psobject.properties.aim. And that gives you just a uh, very, very similar to hash table.keys. It gives you an array of strings of the property names. But in the case of hash tables, it may not always be strings, right? It could be anything. Um, and if you, want, if you want to expand that out instead of doing uh, dot notation, you can do pipe it to get member and select object. I mean, there's, there's always more than one way to do things, right? Uh, and to test for properties, um, we can, we can uh, use the contains operator and see if it has a specific property, you know, true, false. Yes? Uh, you can also index in the property. So you can say, oh, yes, object job properties dot or bracket location. Uh, give me that again. You should be able to say dot object dot yes, object dot property bracket location to get back the location property. And I think you could do dotting of that as well. It might be one of those exceptional spots. All right. I didn't know. Thank you. I'm gonna. So this is why it's. I haven't uh, committed this uh, these changes to main yet because we're gonna add to them in the in the um, in the session. Cool. So another way uh, to access these properties uh, itself is to you know use this square bracket notation. Is there a name for square bracket notation? Index operator. Index operator. Thank you. I always call it square bracket notation. So no longer. Um, and then with PS custom objects, uh, you can you can still access them by by um, uh, variable, so we'll assign location to the property variable, and we can do um, object dot property. You still get it, and we can of course also use the uh, the indexing notation. Just kidding. On PS objects, index, indexing notation does not work. Oh, there we go. Cool. Any uh, questions or uh, maybe things I missed? Looking at you, James. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, hash tables. So we're going to talk, we're going to talk uh, outputting. So if you haven't gathered already, outputting in hash tables is not great. It's not meant for outputting is what I'm going to get at. But there are some, some things we can do that you may not be familiar with. So for example, you can output multiple keys. I didn't know this. I learned this actually preparing for this um, uh, presentation. But if you, have a, if you pass an array of keys, you get all of their values. Oh, I don't know why it's doing the, there we go. Um, cool. I don't have a good use for that because I just learned that like a week ago. 
Um, but if we look at an array, you know, we already did this. It's not great output. You know, we can't even format it well. You know, format list, that doesn't, that doesn't make it a lot better. I mean, we can expand this out. And that's, I mean, where does one, one hash table end, the next one begin? I mean, you, you, I mean, I don't need to drive this home too much. <laughs> um, the same with format table. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing as before. One of the tricks you can use is convert it to JSON. Uh, that's what I do if I want to look at a hash table. Um, and you can see that it, it, it's a lot easier to read, right? Uh, an array of hash tables, I mean, that gets to be a, a lot of data, especially if it's nested. You can control that with the, the depth parameter on uh, convert to JSON. Um, but uh, select actually works. I put this in here because I didn't know that it worked. I thought it didn't work. I'm sure it didn't work in a previous version of PowerShell, but I couldn't figure that out in time. Uh, but you can select a specific key out of an array of hash tables using select object. Uh, and of course, you can write them to files. So part of part of outputting objects is you know outputting them to disk, right? And we can do that you know to I've done it with JSON and CSV, works just fine. If you really want to output hash tables and see them, you should output them as PS custom objects. So we can do that here. So lines 24 to 26, I'm taking a, that array of hash tables we created earlier, whoop, uh, and then they're each hash tables, so we can use the type accelerator. So that's exactly what we're doing, and we get. PS objects. That's really the best way to output hash tables. Um, and of course, you can use the, the new object um, uh, commandlet, and it gets the same thing. So the question is, if they both get the same output, which one's faster? Uh, so if we do type accelerate, or use the type accelerator 10,000 times, takes almost right on the dot one second. If we do new object 10,000 times, it takes a little bit longer. Three seconds. So type accelerator is faster, as you would expect from an accelerator, right? Uh, okay, so with objects, we already know the output's pretty good. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but you know, we output the object, we got a list. We can format to table, right? If, and you guys understand the difference between when it automatically formats to table versus list. It has to do with the number of properties. So the more properties it has, I think it's, was it three or four? Um, it'll for, four, great, thank you. Thank you, this is why I come to these things. So I can ask questions while I'm up here, you guys have to listen. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, and we can also transform properties uh, with select object, have you guys seen the, the name expression? I know there's some, there's some shorthand to do this, but you know, for scripts, presentations, I'm not gonna shorthand it. Um, and so we can convert, for example, that, that date column to an actual date time uh, with select object. We can assign that back to a variable and use that to do some conversions if we wanted. Um, outputting, it's the same. It's exactly the same as outputting hash tables, which is nice. Um, but one of the biggest advantages of PS objects uh, is, and I'm sure you guys have seen this, uh, with um, specifically talking about outputs, is um, here with git process, you know, first of all, in PowerShell 7.4, you notice that several of the uh, headers are italicized. Um, it's when the, the actual name itself is different from the, the header value in, in, the, in the table. I, don't, I, don't, I forget what, what feature that was that got implemented, um, but that's cool. But what we're looking at here is, what is that, five or six values, and it's as a table by default. It's using PowerShell um, formatters. And we can do the same thing for Git service. You can see we got, we have, that's not all of the properties on the service, that's only three of them. So we could write our own, and this is not a, you, we do a whole session on, on uh, formatters. Um, there's a, uh, James has a module for making it really easy, easy out. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm not even gonna open this file. So object, it has, what is that, is that six properties? Um, I've made a, f a custom format that, said, that tells it to only output, my, I forget which ones, a couple of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import that format I'm gonna take, um, in this line 24, this is a little bit of magic here, I'm um, gonna insert a type name onto that PS object, so that when it hits the formatter, it, it uh, will find the format that matches that type, and format it according to that type. And there's actually some really good use cases for that. So that object, and actually let's look at this right now, that object now has the my type type. So PowerShell knows that if there's a format that formats that type, it will format it for us. And this is a crash course, guys. Sorry if it's, this is mind blowing. Um, so now we only see the date and location. And there's some, there's some really cool use cases for that. See hand up? Yeah. Two quick things here. Uh, one, you can also access and change these with 
another heavy property, dollar object dot ps height names. Uh, type a little bit less if you want. You said ps type names? Yeah, dang. Oh, it even auto completed here in uh, yeah. VSCO. Inserter add to that as well. Oh, wow. See, yeah. Maybe we should swap places here. <laughs> I hope not. No, I'm just kidding. All right, cool. There we go. Number two, just in terms of getting the comment nomenclature around this thing, this is what I will commonly call decorating your objects. Cool. Object decoration. Here's my type name. Go format me that way. Okay, so let me back up a, a minute. Line 24, we are decorating our object with a new type name. All right, that was the additional comment for the recording. Cool. Yes, question. Um, I'm assuming you're inserting at index zero, that's a zero, and the formatting only applies to the index zero. Is that correct? Like, what if you had a different formatting for a different type? I'm actually not sure what the answer is to that. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so the question was, um, does it matter what, uh, so uh, here on line 24, zero is the index, does it matter where it goes? Uh, and the answer was that the, um, the formatter will find the first, um, in order, will find the first uh, type that has a formatter and apply that. So if we want our type to be the one formatted, we put it at index zero. So cool. Thank you, Matthias. Yeah. Just one other aha uh -huh attached to that. If you want to change the way that a type is viewed, you can always rearrange those. So if I put it at index zero, that's going to be the first formatter. If I then took the second formatter and made it first, well, it would be formatting like that. It will go down the list until it finds one. But by changing the order, we can change how it's formatted. Cool. So the comment was, we can reorder that if we want. Um, and let's move on, since this is not a formatter talk. But that's some really good information, so that's why we're doing this. So, um, all right. So the other thing, you may want to convert a hash or a PS custom object to a hash table. Um, this is how you can do it with a you know a single if you don't uh, a single um, a piece of custom object that only has you know one level of properties. You know, we create a hash table, and then for each property, we so we iterate through the object .ps object of properties .name. Uh, we just assign it to that uh, same property in the hash table. And there are reasons you might want to do this. I didn't I didn't have a good example to add in here. So, any other questions on that before we move on? All right, so let's talk about iterating. So iterating through hash tables and PS objects. So I mentioned get enumerator earlier. So this uh, hash table has this method, and what it does is it will convert each key into a property that has the um, a key and value, or sorry, let me back up. It'll convert each item in the hash table into a, uh, an object that has the key and value properties. Uh, so you can see in this example, I'm just iterating over them and outputting key, and so dollar underscore dot key and dollar underscore dot value. Sorry, I'm confusing myself while trying to explain this. <laughs> so there we can see in the output. Um, the other way we can iterate through a hash table, and this is iterating through each of the keys, uh, is just to look at the keys um, property, uh, and then uh, we can index into the hash table. So on line nine, or sorry, line ten. We can index into the hash table uh, and get that uh, that value as well. And we can use dot notation instead of the index notation. Either way will work. Uh, so the question is, which is faster? Let's find out. Uh, so doing this 10,000 times with the get enumerator takes about a little over 500 milliseconds. And 10,000 times with the dot keys takes about five, well, I was, I was expecting the opposite. So maybe it's, maybe it's close enough that it's um, back and forth. Sorry, I didn't prepare for that to be the opposite. <laughs> oh well. Uh, okay, uh, so you can use for each. It doesn't have to be for each object. Um, there are some uh, performance considerations uh, when dealing with those. Rob had a great session on that this morning. I saw. Um, I, you know, for loops. Well, it looks like this looks like it would work. Copilot seems to think that'll work. Um, you, you can't actually index into the keys uh, property um, uh, uh, with this uh, index notation. So that doesn't work. Um, and don't try to modify uh, hash tables while you're, you're iterating through them. So you notice here what will happen is we're going to remove the first key. And well, we're going to try to remove all of them. But when we re remove the first one, 
where the air, oh, the, I, the, the air just was above. I was like, whoa, this is really screwing up. So we get, we get an error here. The collection was modified. Um, enumeration op, uh, operation may not execute. So it removes the first key, identifies that it's been um, modified, uh, and you know, exits the loop. Uh, and so you can look at our hash table. It no longer has the first key, which was event. So event was removed, and then it stopped. So it might introduce some really weird errors if you're trying to remove a bunch of keys and only removes one of them. Uh, and iterating over an array of hash tables using dot notation in this case, I mean, it's the same as if you were iterating over any other array, right? They're just hash tables in an array. And there's, there's no, nothing special there. Uh, you know some of the properties that get serialized as strings because there's sub properties, so that's why we get the systems.collections.hash tables. Uh, and we can, uh, if you want to look at it, I had someone ask me about very nested hash tables. So you can see here we have, uh, and I made them ordered. So we have, you know, A, A1, A2. So we have uh, uh, three orders of depth there. Uh, and we, we, we do with ABC, ABC. So it's a lot of ABCs. I couldn't come up with a legit um, <laughs> use case, so I just did ABC. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to import this. And so there's a couple of ways we can do this. Um, so in this case, we're going to output every single item, and I know how deep it is, so I know how now nested do the for each. Uh, but you notice here at line 118, we get to a very nested hash table. We get key, sub key, sub sub key. Uh, and so if we want to do it this way, it becomes very important to name your keys in a way that it makes sense. Um, and this does work. Uh, if we run this, we can output it. We can see the sub keys. We're not going to go through and validate all the output. Um, another approach to do this. Um, is to, uh, on each level, is to um, assign that hash table to another uh, variable. Uh, and we do that down at one depth, you know, each, each, each step down. And so when we get down to the deepest version on line 132, we don't have that long index notation. You know, it's, it's you know, six one, half dozen the other, as my dad would say. You know, it's the same thing. I, I did modify the output so it's nested key. It matches the variable names, but just a couple of ways to do that. Uh, any questions on hash tables iterating? Cool, a lot of info, kind of fast. All right. So PS objects. Um, I was fairly certain you guys are all familiar with you know four four H's. So not not a lot of examples here. It's just you know uh, uh, iterating through an array of objects. We get each of the properties. Not a really uh, uh, extensive examples here uh, for each object as well. And four actually works on an array of PS objects. Uh, it doesn't work on the, the keys property, remember? Um, we can even use while. I mean, there's, it's, it's really how, how you want to do it. And you can see in the while, you just have to remember to iterate the, or increment the, uh, the index there with x. But if you want to iterate through the properties on a PS custom object, uh, we can look at the PS object.properties array, and we can actually output uh, the name and the value of that. So that, that, that's a fun little use case that, that might come in handy at some point. So you can see we're, we're iterating through the properties on a single object, not an array, and so we're looking at the name colon value. Cool, any questions on that? All right, we got six minutes for uh, my case study, which is perfect. So, so far, the moral is hash tables are fast, you know, PS custom objects look pretty, right? So I had a project, um, where we, I worked for a company that had multiple Active Directory forests, had a single Azure Active Directory tenant, and um, uh, an SSO provider, one login. None of them were synced, which might explain why that company lost a few billion dollars this year. But um, I don't work for them anymore, so who cares? Um, <laughs> but I had a project where I had to match up all the users so that we could start syncing um, from the two different Active, Active Directory forests into your Azure AD, and then that syncs into um, the SSO provider. Uh, and so I had to match up users from four different systems, um, and the only uh, unique identifier was the email address. So all the email addresses were all unique, regardless of the fact that they'd all been manually created uh, in all four of these platforms. Um, and so I went through a couple of iterations because I had to run it several times because we didn't have everybody at first and it was, it was a mess. I don't want to go too, 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 too much detail here. But I have some mock data where I have, and we'll look at this here. I have 10,000 users. And so we users one, and each user um, has an ID. They have first name, last name, and email address. We're only going to focus on the ID and email address. I just wanted enough mock data to kind of feel semi-realistic. Okay. 
And we've got, so users one, I'm, a, I'm just gonna take the first 5,000 users. Users two, I'm gonna take all of them, but I'm gonna re reverse the ID so that we can see that the IDs are actually matching. We're not just matching on ID, we are actually matching on the uh, email address. So our goal is to take all the users in users one, which is 5,000 of them, match them up to the users in users two, which there's 10,000 of, and do that as fast as possible, okay? Cool, so, oh, you know what, I, sh I should have taken this section out, so we're gonna pretend like you guys didn't see that. Um, okay, so, oh, and it auto-completes back. <laughs> so, um, the, the, first, the first example here, so we're iterating through all 5,000 of users one, so for each user one and users one, um, and then we're gonna use where object to filter you, the users two array, so where the email address is equal to the user one email, uh, and uh, this little trick on the end, select object first one, this tells it when it finds the first match to just stop. This will actually save a lot of time. So that means it must be fast, right? Well, you guys already saw the little notes I had there. This actually takes, I think it was two or three minutes, right? Okay, it's not very fast. Where object, generally speaking, is not fast. So I'm just gonna stop that, and my computer did not freeze up. So we're doing good. Yeah, <laughs> there we go, I was doing the right way. Uh, okay. So what if we do a for each and then a for each, and then when we find a user that matches, we break out, we, so we grab the data, first of all. Um, I, I think I skipped that in the first part. We're just grabbing an array of IDs so we can get ID one to ID two to match those up. We just break. So for eaches are fast, we know that, right? So if we run this, and I think this one goes fast enough that we, no, we probably shouldn't let that finish. But it, this takes about 20 seconds instead of a couple minutes. That's pretty quick, is that fast enough? No, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so so the, the ne next iteration of this, we can create a, a generic list, a PS object, since this is just a generic PS object. Um, and so I'm gonna take the users two, which is 10,000 users, I'm gonna put them in a list, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iterate over users one like before, but on users two, every time we find a match, we are going to remove that user from users too. Since we know that that user is already matched, we don't have to deal with iterating over that user, that object again, since we don't care about it anymore, okay? That sounds like it should be pretty quick. So let's run this. And this actually finishes faster than I tested this morning, okay? 87 milliseconds, like that's huge compared to two to three minutes. But is that fast enough? No, that's not fast enough, okay? And the answer is because we're not using hash tables. Uh, okay, so what about hash tables? So uh, since in this, in this case, we really care about the email address. That's what we care about, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert users2 into an, a, a hash table where every value is the email address, and this is a fake user, again, so don't worry. This is not somebody that works at my company. Um, and we're gonna take the email address and, and um, as the key, and the value is the hash table of the um, that, that user object fake user object in this case, right? Uh, so we're gonna create two hash tables, one of users one, one of users two, uh, and you can see that, that I'm just taking user, the, the hash table, taking the email, assigning it to the user property. We gotta go here, we gotta go quick here. Cool, so we got two hash tables now. Um, and so now, if we run through all the, use, the keys in users one hash table, and we see if the users two hash table contains that, that key, so that, that email address, um, and we're gonna output that. And we're not doing any removes, we're not doing anything else, we're just using hash tables. And the, differ the difference here is it's, you know, a, th a third faster, or I don't, I don't know, what's, what's the math there? It's faster, it's 20 milliseconds faster, right? So instead of 80 something, it's now 60 milliseconds. So, and, and you know, I was like, well, what if we did remove it? Would that make it faster? The answer is, uh, so you can see here, that when we match it, we actually remove it from the users to hash table. Um, so like the uh, generic list, it made it faster. So does it make the hash table faster? No, it actually doesn't, which is weird to me. But it doesn't, so that's good to know. Um, so that, that's all we had, have time for. It's, it's time right now, um, but really quick, using the dash contains, this is where it's actually slower than using the dot contains. And we can see here that it's, it's like significantly slower. It's like, oh, gotta go get a coffee slower. Three seconds instead of 60 milliseconds. So, I mean, it's not that bad, but you guys can understand. Cool. That's all I got. Any questions? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Actually, you can you can hit me with questions. Um, the moral is because I have a moral. 
Oh, shoot, what, where are we at? There we go. Um, so the moral of the demo, really quick, use Hashables for performance. Use PS Custom Objects for presentation. All right, any questions? <laughs> I had too much fun with that. Cool, if you guys got questions, you can ask, yeah.